Today's video is sponsored by Trade Coffee, but more on that later. Today on the show, we're making three tropical drinks, but maybe we shouldn't have. My name is Leandro Demon Riva. This is The Educated Barfly. I miss the random quotes at the beginning. Let's get into making the cocktail. I spend so much of my time thinking about, reading about, and drinking cocktails that I really don't have a lot of time to research coffee. And yet, I drink coffee every single day. I love drinking coffee. I actually cannot get through my morning without drinking coffee, but I don't really know that much about it. And so I end up going to the store and I stroll the aisle of all of the high-end coffee out there and I really just don't know what to buy. And the other thing that's a little bit of a thorn in my side is that I'm actually very particular about the flavor of my coffee. That's why I like to get my coffee from Trade. So Trade is an affordable coffee subscription service. It's very easy. They give you a little quiz that just talks about your coffee proclivities, whether you like a light roast or a dark roast, milk cream or black, whether you want sugar or no sugar. And then they curate a selection of coffees they think are right for you. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off their first order plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com backslash barfly or click the link in the description below. That's 40 cups of coffee for free, just for you. Ah, trade. Today on the show, we are gonna be tackling three different tiki cocktails. This is a continuation of my exploration of the Grog Log. The Grog Log was a book written by Jeff Beach Bumberry, and it was the first book in his several volume unearthing of tiki cocktail culture and tiki cocktails, old tiki cocktails, all the old Don the Beachcombers. Without him, we would be lost. Anyway, I've really not done that much with tiki in my career. My expertise has always been classic American cocktails, but as I delve deep, as I've fallen harder and harder for rum, I've really been a lot more interested in tropical cocktails and tiki cocktails and sort of learning about them and kind of figuring out what, what the balance of flavor is and everything. And so I decided we were gonna do this deep dive. Anyway, I've been pretty bad at it. So today we're gonna be doing three cocktails as opposed to one. We're gonna get through a little bit quicker. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So, you know, strap it on in and let's drink some uh, tropical drinks. First cocktail up is called Colonel Beach's Plantation Punch. This cocktail hails from the Hawaiian location of Don the Beachcombers circa 1950s. So when old Don Beach got divorced from his wife, his wife raked his ass over the coals and she got the original Hollywood location in the divorce settlement. And so he had to open up shop in Hawaii. And he opened up a couple of different uh, eating and drinking establishments, Don the Beachcombers being one. First things first, grab this guy. We're gonna do one ounce of lime juice, two dashes of Angostura bitters, six drops of Pernod. And we're not doing the absinthe Pernod, we're doing the pastis Pernod. And don't put more than six drops because this is very powerful stuff. Two ounces of pineapple juice. Today I'm using the fresh squeeze variety, but if you don't want to do that, you can go to Trader Joe's and they have pretty gosh darn good pineapple juice canned up. Then we're going to do half an ounce of Falernum, half an ounce of Barbados rum. There is so much stuff in this cocktail. This is like a true Don the Beachcomber creation. One ounce of gold Puerto Rican rum and uh, two ounces of dark Jamaican rum. Little skosh! Look at the old whip shape. It's a lot of liquid, but what we're going to do is because we didn't want to get rid of the effervescence we did not shake with this. We're gonna add two ounces of ginger beer, like so. Just give it a little mix. I could have done this in the tin too, but I didn't. I feel like even this is too small a glass. Cause like, it's just a huge drink. It's not gonna be enough ice. You know what I'm gonna have to do actually? You know, let's do a little movie magic this a little bit. All right. I had really trouble today finding like decent mint. It was like all the mint was picked over. Slappy poo, give it a crushy, crushy madoodle. I'm gonna put that in there like so. I manhandled a, a pineapple today, so got a couple of these guys. And they're, this one's like really nice too, look at that. The problem with pineapple fronds is they get really junky very easily. I'm gonna put that there. Just make this as tropical looking as possible. Grab one of these guys, you're showing everyone our mess. Just like right there, like that. Does that look nice and tropical? Look at that. Look at that. That's a thing of beauty. All right, let's taste this thing. Oh, 
Wow. Hey, let's unpack this. I'm not going to offend Don the Beachcomber because he's long dead. But this is the most unbalanced cocktail I have ever tasted. It tastes of very sharp lime juice, which means that the lime juice is not being balanced by the bits of sugar in here. And then also there is a bitterness on the back palate that I think is coming from the kind of like bitter spice from the Falernum, maybe a little bit from the Angostura bitters. It is very rum forward. Uh, it has no balance. It's just like super rum forward and really tart. This drink really relies on the little bits of sugar from the ginger beer and the pineapple juice to get its balance, you know, to balance that, that lime juice out, but it's just not enough sugar. Uh, this definitely needs some simple syrup in it. The rum blend, which is something that Don the Beachcomber is really famous for, so I just don't really understand it. Like I get the dark Jamaican rum that's in there, you know, right on the front, right? And I probably am tasting maybe a little bit of that Ron de Barrelito, that, you know, uh, uh, Puerto Rican rum that I put in there, but I have no idea why there's Barbados rum in there. A half an ounce in there cannot possibly be reading. And even if you subscribe to the idea uh, that really actually the people at Dunthing Company are very, very famous for, which is like very minute changes in things create differences in cocktails and they will read in some way. I just don't see how that's happening here with this like crazy amount of juices in it, but not balanced. So there it is, Colonel Beach's Plantation Punch. I give it a uh, double. <laughs> it's not good, I don't like it. Don't make it, just wasted four minutes watching this thing. So just on to the next. <laughs> I literally got nothing for you on this next cocktail. It's called the Blue Reef. I, I picked it because it was the next cocktail on the list in the grog log to pick. It's interesting in its choice of ingredients, as if the cocktail picked the ingredients itself and it wasn't just somebody who created. But, but then on top of that, this cocktail, every single time I look in the grog log or any other Jeff Berry's books, I cross-reference the cocktail with his app. And this one wasn't in the app, which means that it didn't make the cut. Now I'm not, that's not gonna influence what I think about this drink, but I'm just saying, I'm just putting that out there. All right, so this, this drink has a whopping one and a half ounces of lime juice. So much lime juice that there wasn't enough lime juice in there and I need to cut another lime. Ounce and a half of blue curacao. This cocktail to me seems like somebody was like, I want a blue drink and I'm gonna put a little vanilla in it. Two ounces of rum and you wanna use white Jamaican rum, so that's what we're using. And then a half an ounce of Galliano, the least annoying bottle to pour from. All right, let's go get our pebble ice and our, our drinking vessel, Marius. Bam. I'm gonna put it in this snifter. Give it the old whip shake. Whoa. Well, it ain't called a blue reef for nothing. There you go. That's the drink. No garnish. I gotta say, that's what I kind of don't like about the Grog Log or a lot of the early Jeff Berry books is that they don't have a ton of information. I think he's gotten a lot better about this nowadays, especially he's written, I mean, he's written some really fantastic books. And I'm glad that we have these as reference, but I will say that there's just not a lot of information on garnishing or, or, or like glassware. So some drinks are, you kind of have to guess. And there's a lot of lime juice. That is a lot of lime juice, but it's not bad. There's so much lime juice in here that it runs over the flavor of the Galliano, which I get a little bit of the vanilla, a little bit. It's not bad. Actually, the Curacao and the Galliano are so sweet that it does a really good job of balancing the lime juice out. It's very, very tart. I think I would dial this down and probably redo it, but it's it's pretty good. You know, you get that nice, you know, a little bit of the sharpness of the rum there. It's it's not terrible, but you know, it's not like inspiring either. Now, if you want like a pretty good cocktail, pare down the lime juice by about a, at least a half an ounce. What I would do is I would do two, three quarter lime, three quarter uh, curacao, half an ounce of the uh, Galliano then you'll get a little bit more of that vanilla feel. The lime won't be as sharp and it'll be a lot more balanced, I think. But there it is, guys, the Blue Reef. Third time's the charm. Hopefully this was better than the last. What do you mean? Oh, as far as like the quality of the cocktail? Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Hopefully this is a better one. So this cocktail is called the Coronado Luau Special. It was created by a bartender named Bert Chan in 1962 at the Hotel Del Coronado. The Hotel Del Coronado is in San Diego, California. It is a very old hotel. It was opened in 1888. It was uh, like a symbol of 
like kind of cowboy luxury, if that makes any sense, or like pioneer luxury. It was a, just a very famous and still is a very famous hotel. The other very interesting thing about the Hotel Coronado is that it is haunted and it has a kindly resident ghost named Kate Morgan. In 1892, a woman named Kate Morgan, who was 24 years old, checked into the hotel and never checked out alive again. So she arrived on Thanksgiving Day, 1892, and apparently she waited around for five days for a gentleman to join her, who never did. She was very unhappy and visually distraught, and then she took her own life. I wonder if she haunts the luau room and drinks Coronado luau specials. That's what I wonder. We're not using a shaker for this drink. We're gonna be flash blending it in our trusty Hamilton Beach. We are gonna do two ounces of lemon juice. This is gonna be a big old drink, you guys. And this is why it's such a good thing to have a large format juicer, everybody. Three ounces of orange juice. Am I gonna get three ounces of that out of this? That's two, nope, almost, but not quite. Three ounces of orange juice, one ounce of simple syrup, quarter of an ounce of orgia, one ounce of dark Jamaican rum. We're using Coruba this time. One ounce of light rum, just decided to go with the, the Bacardi again on this guy. Half an ounce of Grand Marnier. Oh, if you don't have Grand Marnier, you can sub it out with... Oh, Orange Curacao. Orange Orange Curacao, and typically, you know, because, you know, both of them are brandy based, so they're cognac based. So you wanna do Curacao, which is a brandy base, as opposed to something like Triple Sec or something, which is gonna be a sugar beet base, and it's gonna be a lot drier and a lot cleaner. But you can do whatever, any any orange, any orange liqueur you want, really. All right, then we're doing half an ounce of brandy. I'm just gonna do a little scoshy poo in there and do the five second flash blend. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that was a long five seconds. Oh yeah, it's a perfect volume. Okay, this thing is supposed to have like a really crazy garnish, but it does feature this now defunct tiki inverted umbrella thing, which we got through Spike. The Contigo Tiki Bar make these things, and it's basically a lantern. Yeah, it's like a little lantern on a little post. And these were very popular back in the day. They are now defunct. Contigo Tiki Bar decided that they were gonna make some. And there you go, but uh, that's not it. We actually need one of these dudes. I think we're gonna go for a pineapple frond here, like that. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. I guess I wanted to like, I wish I could prop it up somehow. There you go, bam. All right, let's test the Coronado Luau special and see if it's any good. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's a lot of orange. Okay, so it's a lot more balanced than the last one. I'm, this is definitely one of those drinks that sort of lend people to the idea that tiki drinks are just overly sweetened fruit juice. That's basically what it tastes like. Even though you get a little bit of the dark rum in there, pretty much the other other ingredients are hidden. Uh, that quarter ounce of orgia, I don't know if I'm really detecting it. It might, might be given a little bit of texture in there, but it's not bad. I mean, I could see myself putting away quite a few of these at the bar and then having a really bad headache the next day. But yeah, it's, it's okay, it's pretty good. I don't know. It's not like earth shatteringly good, but it's it'll do. So that wraps up our series of three tiki drinks to avoid. Yeah, I don't know what we're gonna title this video. I think we should title it like, the worst tiki drinks of all time. My name is Leandro Demon Riva. This is The Educated Cocktail. So, so today's, so the first cocktail that we're doing today, am I centered? Uh, okay. I just got a little rum in my eye. An old eye full of rum. That is a lot of lime juice. That is a lot of lime juice, but it's not bad. It's like the ocean, very acidic. Did I say Coronado? Hold on. Mm -hmm. Twice. So, oh, apparently. Yes. She literally checked out. I'm done, out of here. Yes, she didn't, ch she, she chucked dreams. out of this earthly plane. Mm -hmm. uh, sh apparently she, so. Well, no because ghosts aren't real, but uh, other than that, sure, <laughs> whatever you want. How do you know ghosts aren't real? Uh, let's find a something to... We're gonna do a quarter of an ounce. Uh, the grog dog, the grog dog, 